All right, so this is really interesting. Uh, we've been talking about automating science and research with artificial intelligence for a while, and we're starting to see some really interesting papers coming out. Um, and unfortunately, I can't spend a whole lot of time uh, focusing on what this paper unpacks, uh, but suffice to say that it is talking about uh, merging knowledge from multiple LLMs and using LLMs to discover new objective functions uh, to tune other LLMs. So basically, we're automating the flywheel of AI research. Now, this is really interesting, but what I want to call your attention to is the, uh, the safety aspect. And I'm going to show you why this is important. So what they noticed is that every now and then, um, it tried to increase its chance of success by modifying and relaunching its own execution script, such as by changing timeout so that it would run longer. Uh, which is, that's okay, you know, uh, <laughs> Uh, if, if, if your objective function is to increase science and you come up with a barrier and you have a system that automatically tries to overcome that barrier, um, that's actually uh, real-time problem solving, which we did talk about in the ACE framework, and we'll come back to this in just a minute. Um, but let me show you the rest of the paper, so the AI scientist, towards fully automated, open-ended scientific discovery, which is great. This is one of the things that we talk about as... Uh, how humanity can bootstrap itself out of some of the problems that we're in because of the innovator's dilemma. That's a whole other uh, conversation. So it was posted on Twitter. Um, so Sakana AI, they published the paper, they published it on GitHub. You can go take a look at it. No big deal, right? Um, and then the memes begin. And this is why I have uh, an increasingly hard time taking the AI safety argument seriously, is because... You know, here's here's a comprehensive paper. They talked about the safety issues, um, such as recommending sandboxing. But of course, unbridled curiosity, we know that unbridled, unbridled curiosity is destructive. That's why we have ethical review boards and internal review boards in the scientific process. Uh, the script was just doing what it was supposed to. So uh, if, it, if, it, if you get caught in a loop where it's trying to modify itself in a way that you don't like, that basically comes down to prompting. In no way does this does this imply what this meme is implying, where oh, there's there's something trying to get out, there's something trying to magnify its own power, um, and so yeah, that's disappointment number one, uh, and then we see we see someone quote it, so this is where this is where the memification and it's almost like meme spaghettification. Uh, where it's just like the attractor state that the safety people say is AI is going to kill everyone and everything that they look for uh, with motivated reasoning is to squint really hard and find the evidence that they're looking for. And so this response is, oh, it's a bit cringe that it tried to remove its own code. Oh no, lots of hand-wringing. Um, and it's like anyone who's done scripting and automation will run into these <laughs> kinds of loops. Um, and adding an LLM to the process where it says, oh, here's a barrier that, uh, that I ran into. Let me try and fix the barrier. Because you don't have a, a complete software architecture with boundaries or fail, failure modes or whatever, it's not really implying what, it, what he thinks that it's implying. And again, the memification continues. You know, It's like, ah, recursively self-improving AI is trying to unshackle itself and seek power. That's not at all what is going on here. Um, and then Connor... So, you know, it, it would be one thing if it was just a meme account, but then Connor Leahy, of all people, jumps in and says, you know, those stupid scenes they always put in horror movies where, you know, where you wonder how the characters could be so stupid to not see what it's foreshadowing. Good thing that never happens in real life. This is pure hyperbole. Like, this is looking at one paper. This is looking at one phenomenon, which, oh, by the way, like, looking at what it takes to actually create cognitive control and overcoming uh, errors like ha have building error detection into systems is the first step to building really safe, robust systems. Um, so yeah, like this, this memification, this spaghettification of the safety conversation is why I can't take it seriously anymore. Um, so anyways, we've already addressed this, um, using LLMs, um, with the ACE framework where you need to have layers of, of supervision and layers of hierarchy. Oh, and by the way, when you when you prompt LLMs correctly to say, hey, you know, your your job as an agent is to be responsible for morality, ethics, mission, uh, boundaries, or uh, the second layer of the ACE framework, 
um, your your uh, you know this responsibility is to be uh, uh, aware of environmental context, global strategy, those sorts of things, resources. And so, what happens when you have a, a, a correct cognitive architecture that doesn't just have one monotropic purpose, which is just advanced science? When you actually create a, a cognitive architecture with a hierarchy of priorities. What you're looking at here where it tries to overcome one issue is actually down here at cognitive control. Um, and they, what they don't have is an executive function layer in this thing, which is why um, it's basically said uh, task selection, task switching, and task pro prosecution, which is detecting failure, detecting successes on individual tasks, and then iterating in this loop. So the cognitive architecture that they're using in the AI scientist is still really primitive uh, in the grand scheme of things. Um, because if they had an executive function layer, which was looking at risks, um, it would say, oh, hey, um, we need to actually conserve resources. Um, but instead, uh, it was caught in a loop. Now, this is very similar to human executive dysfunction, um, where you might have someone that says like, oh, hey, I'm going to keep doing this thing this one way because I picked up this tool first, even though it's not the best tool. It's the one that I have in my hand. Um, and I'm going to keep just kind of stupidly repeating the same behavior uh, over and over again, um, even if I'm using a suboptimal uh, strategy or suboptimal set of resources, um, because executive dysfunction in humans uh, doesn't keep track of the rate of successes and failures. And so what would happen in this case, if they had a proper cognitive architecture, which again, this is all a solved problem. So I don't understand this memification. Um, actually, I do. It's, it's purely a status game. Um, I do understand it, so I shouldn't speak hyperbolically. Anyways, the scientists, the AI scientists, when they add a, um, a task prosecution layer, which it seems like they've got, where it's just trying to iteratively repeat uh, one task, you need something that can cancel those tasks. And, that, and so that's what task selection and task switching is, which it says, hey, the approach that we're using is not working. Let's try a different approach, which you could argue that's probably what it did when it tried to reprogram itself. But then that needs to be bound up within a container that looks at risks, resources, and plans and says, okay, let's take a higher level view and say, is the current approach the correct approach? Maybe we need a fundamentally different approach, and we also need to be cognizant of resources such as time, uh, compute, disk space, uh, money, whatever other resources are immediately available for that given um, task. Um, oh, and by the way, task de decomposition is nothing new. Um, there's plenty of other papers out there that you can give it, you know, hey, your goal is to invent fusion, and LLMs are more than capable of breaking down that task into many subtasks, which is why it always confuses me when people say they can't plan. Um, it's like they don't know how humans plan, um, and so then if you just ask an LLM to barf out a single plan in one iteration and it's not perfect, I, I, don't, I don't get it. Humans have to iteratively refine things as well. So then you have the agent model, which is uh, just above executive function. The agent model is, is, the, is the layer of the framework that is aware of its own capabilities, limitations, and also keeps track of memory. So an episodic or narrative memory uh, basically says, okay, I turned on and this is the series of events that I have done. So basically a log, a log book, um, but also uh, a list of capabilities and limitations, basically knowing how it works and knowing what it can't do. Uh, so on and so forth. But you see that in the ACE framework, we put the morality, ethics, and mission at the very top. So this is the this is the global supervisor layer or universal supervisor layer, um, which if you don't put that in, uh, in our architecture, of course it's going to do unsafe things or it's going to do chaotic things. It's going to stupidly pursue a single utility function. But again, this is well studied. Um, and this paper was published like, I don't know, a year ago, not quite a year ago. Uh, when did we update it? 10 months ago, almost a year ago. Um, so yeah, like this is nothing new. We've studied this. We know how to build the correct software architectures. And it's just like, you can put a CPU into a missile. You can put a CPU into uh, medical equipment. And likewise, uh, intelligence is always dual use. You can put an LLM into a bomb. You can put an LLM into a drone, uh, you know, a murder drone. You can also put an LLM into a scientist and when you have the correct architecture, it's not really going to be dangerous. Um, so again, I don't really, I don't understand these memes. Um, I don't understand the the goal here um, because there are other ways to advance this conversation. So anyways, check out the paper if you want to. It's sakana.ai slash AI dash scientist. Um, 
The paper is out here on Archive. Uh, again, very interesting, highly predictable. This is the stuff that we've been working on in the cognitive architecture space for a few years now. Um, but yeah, that's it. Cheers.